Last week, we learned the story of Holger and Fiori, two warriors whose love for each other was so strong that it transcended death itself. Today's video is focused on yet another love story, but viewer be warned, this one doesn't exactly have a happy ending. As we travel southeast from Elder Gleam Sanctuary, we eventually spot a large stone tower off in the distance. This is Mistwatch, a fort that was built into the side of a cliff and, as we learn upon entry, is home to a gang of bandits that apparently don't like company. Time to end this little game. After taking out the final bandit, we can explore the tower that we killed her in, but it's relatively empty, just some tables with a few bottles of mead sitting upon them. We can then loot the other bandits for some gold and other miscellaneous items, travel back up the stairs to the east, and pull a lever to lower a drawbridge. At the other end of the bridge, we can pass through a door and enter Mistwatch North Tower. There's some fur and antlers on the wall to the west, and after turning around, we find ourselves at the start of a long, dimly lit hallway that wraps around the tower's core. Traveling south, we find a small table with some bread and a couple of tankards, and at the end of the hallway is a door. But before we go any further, we can turn to the southeast, where we find a man standing inside of a small nook. Stendar's mercy, you aren't one of them. Please, you've got to help me. What's going on? It's my wife, Viola. I think she's being held in this tower. All right, Krister, I want you to just calm down and tell me what happened. I'm sorry. I just... You're right. Let me explain. Viola, my wife, left the farm on errands and never came back. It's been months, and I've been searching for her since. I heard a rumor that these bandits were ransoming captives, so I thought she may be here. I managed to sneak past the guards and get this far, but I don't think I can go on. I'm no warrior. Please, can you look for her? If you want my help, you need to be giving me accurate information. You're sure she's being held here? Honestly, I have no idea. But I've looked all over, and the kidnappings here started around when she disappeared. So I have to hope. Alright, I'll see if I could find her. Thank you. I don't have much, but I can give you some coin for the trouble. One of the guards dropped this key while I hid. I wager it'll come in handy for you. Please hurry. For agreeing to help Krister, he gives us the Mistwatch key, which we can use to unlock all of the doors inside of the fort. On the shelf next to Krister is a potion of minor healing, an iron helmet, a petty soul gem, another potion of healing, and at the bottom of the shelf, a pair of hide boots. On the other side of this small room is an apprentice-locked chest with some gold, potions, and other loot inside. With that, we can head back out into the hallway and then use the Mistwatch key to pass through the door we saw earlier. On the other side, we find ourselves in a large open room with some sleeping bags and a dresser filled with clothes against the western wall. On the other side of the room, we find what looks to be a butchering station with an axe, a few pheasant breasts, and a whole pheasant that is yet to be butchered. Traveling through a doorway to the north and then turning left, we can begin climbing a set of winding stairs, only to get interrupted by a couple of bandits that desperately wanted us dead. After a tense brawl that lasted longer than it should have, we can continue making our way up the stairs, being careful not to step in one of the bear traps that the bandits had set up for intruders. Once we're at the top, we can head west into another room with a number of shelves and tables. On the first shelf, we find some tankards, a few bowls, and a hide helmet of illusion, 
Sitting on the second shelf, we can search through an apothecary's satchel where we find some honeycomb and taproot. Next to the satchel is a potion of plentiful healing, and on the upper shelf, we find a weak aversion to fire potion. On a nearby table, there's a large kettle and an alchemy lab, and against the eastern wall, we find an unlocked chest with some loot inside. Heading over to the western side of the room, we can pick a master locked gate, but there's nothing inside. Just an empty cell with some ragged clothes lying on the floor. It seems like there were prisoners in here at one point, but where did they go? Did they find a way to escape, or were they relocated to another cell somewhere in the fort? Or perhaps they were executed. In any event, after searching the cell, we can go back out into the chamber and head north towards a ladder leading up to the Mistwatch lower balcony. Peering out over the side of the tower, we can get a pretty good view of Southeast Skyrim, with towering trees and vast mountain ranges stretching across the horizon line. We pass a door on our left as we continue following the balcony west, but before passing through it, we can pick an adept locked chest with some gold and a soul gem inside. Heading through the door, we find ourselves inside of the fort's west tower. There's a shelf to the west with a pickaxe on it, and as we turn around and begin making our way through the dark corridor, we're confronted by more Mistwatch bandits. Over here. Damn! You can't win this! It's nothing! We're out! After gathering some gold from the bandits, we can loot a nearby chest sitting against a wall to the east, which in my playthrough contained more gold, lockpicks, a potion of minor stamina, and a scroll of mayhem, which causes creatures and people up to level 12 to attack anyone nearby for 60 seconds. There's a shelf to the west with some food and a clothing iron, and directly across from the shelf we find an imperial lying dead inside of a cell. Blood is splattered across the floor and the wall behind her. Next to the cell, we find a small table with a note. The lady we grabbed down by the river turned out to be a feisty one. Burbag thought he could beat some respect into her, but it looks like he used too strong a hand. The boss is not going to be happy when she hears about this. Looks like this poor Imperial prisoner died after the bandits took their torture methods a bit too far. What a horrific way to go. At the end of the hallway, we find another set of stairs spiraling upwards, just like the ones before. We must be getting close to the top of the tower. Up ahead, we find a table with some steel arrows and a drum sitting on top. Apparently, these bandits are musically competent. At the end of the hallway is another door leading out to the Mistwatch higher balcony. Outside, we can walk across a short pathway and use the Mistwatch key to pass through another door into the East Tower. Inside, we find a shelf with various books and apparel, and on a second shelf, we can loot some more gold and a coin purse. We also find a pair of Stormcloak officer boots and a pair of iron boots sitting next to them. After just a few more steps, the bandit leader stops us in our tracks. All right, Snowback. Who are you and what are you doing in my tower? Stand aside, woman. I'm here for Fiola. Fiola? How do you know that name? Her husband sent me. Now answer the question before I strike you down. Where is Fiola? Krister? He's here? Wait, wait, wait a second. You know Krister? The fool's my husband. I'm Fiola. Or I was, once. Don't you see? I left that old scab. Came home to Skyrim and found this rabble of bandits. Didn't take much to prove myself and knock them into shape. Now every free blade from here to Windhelm wants to sign on for a piece. Well, I've got to admit, that's quite the story, Fiola. And it won't end here. I'd die before I went back. And what exactly am I supposed to tell Krister? I don't know. I never expected the old bag to follow me so far. Just get rid of him. But don't kill him. I don't hate the man. I just want him to go back to his farm and forget about me. We're then given two dialogue options, both of which result in different endings for the quest. 
We'll start by saying, you know what, this is pointless. I'm just going to kill you and be done with it. Better men have tried. Let's finish this. You're fine. No more. I need I need. I cannot best you. After killing Fiola, we can loot her body, on which we find Fiola's wedding band, a banded shield, a near full set of Nordic armor, a steel war axe, and an elven dagger. Before heading back to Christer to tell him the sad news, we can explore this final chamber. On top of a table to the east, we find a few pieces of gold and what appears to be a keg of mead, no surprise there. There's two cells in the room, neither of which have anything of interest. But inside of what appears to be Fiola's living quarters, we find a dresser. On it is a copy of the book Halgird's Tale, a copy of The Wolf Queen Volume 2, and a potion of minor healing. Next to the dresser is a weapon rack with an orcish warhammer and a steel battle axe of wariness. With the chamber completely looted, we can head all the way back to the base of North Tower, where we find Krister still waiting for our return. What news? Why isn't Fiola with you? Krister, I'm sorry to tell you this, but she's dead. She attacked me, and I had no choice but to kill her. What? Why, Fiola would never! You monster! I'll kill you for this! With nothing but his bare hands, Krister attacks us in a fit of rage, leaving us no choice but to kill him as well. With both Fiola and Krister dead, the quest ends and we walk away with nothing more than Fiola's wedding band, which can be sold for just 150 gold. But let's go back and see what would have happened had we decided to work with Fiola instead of killing her. All right, Fiola, I'll talk to Krister for you and see if I can get him to leave you alone. Take my wedding band. Stoon only knows why I kept it this long. He'll recognize it. Tell him whatever you think will convince him to leave. The ring itself is worth a few bits. Keep it as thanks for cutting off the last vestige of an unwanted fate. So regardless of whether or not we kill Fiola, for what it's worth, we still end up with her wedding band. Heading back down and talking to Krister again, we are given the choice between two lies. We can either say, I found this ring but no sign of her, or we can say, she's dead, but I did find this. First we'll tell Krister, I was able to find this ring, but there's no sign of Fiola. Her marriage band. Then there's hope. She was here. I have to move on if I want to find her. Please, take the coin I promised. Blessings of Stendar on you. And with that, a hopeful Krister takes off in search of his long-lost love, who, sadly, no longer feels the same way about him. On the plus side, if we end up finishing the quest this way, we collect not only the wedding band, but also a few pieces of gold. And finally, we can go back and tell Krister, I'm sorry, but your wife is dead. The only thing I was able to bring back to you was her wedding band. That? I gave it to her on our wedding day. Help me, Divines. It's true, isn't it? I'm sorry. Keep the ring. I cannot bear the weight of them in my heart. And I must make the journey alone now. Thank you for... Thank you. Krister leaves the fort yet again, but this time feeling sad and lonely instead of happy and hopeful. We also don't get any gold if we end the quest this way, meaning that the most profitable option is to work with Fiola and then lie to Krister and tell him that his wife is nowhere to be found. Regardless of which dialogue option we choose, we can report back to Fiola and tell her that Krister has officially exited the premises. How did... No, forget it. I don't care to know. I'm free of the little man and that's what matters. I owe you a debt and I aim to repay it. We'll see each other again someday. For now, goodbye and thanks. Admittedly, I was shocked to learn that Fiola had become the leader of the Mistwatch bandits. I thought for sure I was going to find her inside of a prison cell and then have to escort her back to Krister so that the two could be reunited once again. But even though this was an interesting twist, 
I wish that Bethesda had included a bit more lore in Mistwatch, and maybe even provided us with more information regarding Fiola's backstory. I would have loved to hear about how she managed to become the leader of a vicious gang of bandits, and what she had to do in order to gain their respect. To me, it just feels like a missed opportunity in what was otherwise a unique and compelling side quest. But I'd love to know what you think, folks. Would you have liked to learn more about Fiola's backstory? What do you think Christer will do after we lied and said that Fiola was nowhere to be found? What about after we told him that his wife was dead? Will he spiral down into a state of depression? Or will he be able to move on to somebody else? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked this video, consider clicking on the thumbs up icon to show your support, or better yet, subscribe to my channel so that you can stay up to date on all of my latest content. I post new videos on Skyrim every single Friday, ladies and gentlemen, so be sure to check back next week for more Skyrim lore, commentary, and analysis. For those who are fans of the Fallout franchise, I also put out lore videos on Fallout 4 every Tuesday, so be sure to check those out as well. But that's all for now, folks. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time.